Hey, it's JC1424 once again with NASCAR Rivals. And this is gonna be another Race Now episode. Today, I wanna race as Martin Truex Jr., the winner of last weekend's race at the LA Coliseum. And you see he's got his Bass Pro Shops car, which, you know, he's got a new version of it. It's definitely better than this one, it's upgraded. But because it's changed, and I don't wanna just drive a, a default paint scheme, we have this, the auto, owner's insurance car it's blue it's beautiful it's pixelated but he drove a bass pro shops car then he's also got the patriotic version the salutes bass pro shops car in this game so we're gonna use that car because we're going to new england we're gonna be racing at new hampshire which should be right uh yeah there and the reason why is because martin trex jr almost won new hampshire in the 2022 season but he took a pit stop under a caution, and I don't know if he took too many tires or what, but he was stuck in traffic, and no, that car was not good in traffic. It was good at leading. Just drove away when he had to lead. Okay, before we go racing, I had to make sure we got the right settings. It's still on the same settings that we used when I did some update video like a week ago. We're going to go back up all the way, 105. Full damage. The 25% race length. Um, Why... I can't see where I'm going. What uh, Four times tire wear, fuel consumption. And I'll use less wear, more more grip. What, how do you, why is more grip to the left and then less grip is, man, I don't understand. I'm pissed off right now because I just went through a one minute loading screen just to realize, oh, I didn't change my settings back. But the flags, we'll do relaxed yellow. That way they'll throw a caution when one blows a tire, but you know, not an actual wreck. I've noticed how, how it's designed. And we'll do the multiple race stages. And we're not going to be qualifying. And for the driving with the AI, I don't think I have actually have to change anything. The skill range, yeah, we'll make that wide. And the starting spread, let's make that compressed. And then we'll have the frequent mechanical failures, of course. Although I don't think they had that many mechanical failures at New Hampshire. It was just um, a little wreckage here and there. And some, some tomfoolery. Okay. We did what we gotta do. Welcoming you to New Hampshire Motor Speedway for the Ambetter 301. Situated an hour from Boston and known as the Magic Mile, this track is flat but fast. Drivers will be focused on their brakes, center roll, and good drive off of the corners to give them the best chance of winning that lobster today. Martin Truex Jr. am better than everyone else here. 301%. I don't know. So, yeah, we're gonna... Next session, no practice, and then uh, none of that qualifying. Just gonna go racing. Okay, so now we're gonna be starting 39th. Let's head to the track where the drivers and teams are making their final preparations. Who's going to get it done today at the Magic Mile? Christopher Bell, the race winner in real life, is starting on the pole. And he's got his Ream car, of course, because you got the DLC. What if racing? Got some fan mail. Okay, I'm getting so many notifications right now. Like, I tried to start this race a while ago, and I couldn't do it because I was getting Discord notifications. Now I'm getting What If Racing notifications and Linkin Park notifications. Everybody's putting shit out. How about y'all shut up? We got 17 laps in the first stage. It is... Ah! Corey LaJoy, you fucking bearded bastard. What was that? The, the sun is, is behind us? Okay. Where? Where? where I, I, the sun is behind us. It's shining on my car. I don't. I can't see it, though. That's odd. I mean, I guess, you know, it should be up in the sky a good bit, but... I can't tell if it's supposed to be noon or early afternoon or, or what. Why am I last? I'm, I'm racing. I should not be racing and then just be sitting in last. But Christopher Bell, being good at this track, and... Being on fire and starting first, all of that kind of concerns me. I don't know how strong the AI is, but once I actually get anywhere near him, I don't know if he'll be able to, be, uh, to contest with the guy. Which, that's okay. If he wins the race in this episode, hey, we got to see Martrex Jr. at least go back to finish second, not, I don't know, fifth or wherever he finished in real life. He was just really great clean air. 
untouchable. When you put him in traffic, suddenly he couldn't do crap. In 10 laps past one damn car, even if he was way faster than them beforehand. And that shows how much of a difference it makes. The uh, aerodynamics and how the cars are set up. I, mean, I don't know what happened that day for Truex. Like, if they had that thing set up so that it was so fast on its own, it was so fast in qualifying, that is exactly what the plan was, to get the pole and then just drive that thing to victory lane. But and they, they got him first, and it's like he could drive right the heck away from everyone. But then suddenly, once there was cars in front of him, it just wasn't the same. So if they had to go through lap traffic with the green flag was long enough, I don't know if he would have wound up losing the lead because of that. But yeah, we're working our way to the field. And see, the sun is shining on the back of my car. But where? Where is the sun? I don't see the sun. Outside, outside. Is... Is Michael McDowell the son? I don't know. Because, you know, he's yellow. Maybe, maybe it's just Michael McDowell. So bright and wonderful. I can't c compete with Michael McDowell. He's too fast. Ow! That's why I just ran into the sun with Martin Truex Jr. Oh, my God. They're so fast and competitive back here. I don't remember this. I don't remember this in Heat Games. Racing at New Hampshire on the hardest difficulty with the default setup and then not being able to, I don't know, run like in the top 10. I, I'm used to having a pretty easy time passing like the first 30 cars of the field or so. I don't have anywhere to go. Like one guy's on the bottom, one guy's in the middle. This is that same old world of outlaws bull crap where you might be fast, but if they're taking up both lanes, you're going to sit here and you're going to either run them over or you're going to be a patient little bitch. And I, I'm going to do a little bit of both. Hey, Almendinger. Almendinger. Hi. I don't know what the fuck's wrong with me. Yeah, so we got 10 laps left in the stage. We're getting there. It's fine if we're nowhere near the lead after the first stage. It's the second stage we got to be worried about. I don't know if I like the field getting bunched back together because I clearly can't work my way through them when they are right, right now. Like, I'm just struggling to pass one car because there's two at the same time. But also, this car is lacking in straightaway speed because of the shifts into fifth gear, which they, they are probably shifting down to third in the corners, go to fourth and then fifth in the straightaway, but... Specifically, the player in this game is at a massive disadvantage because when it shifts into fifth gear, the AI don't do that. Only the player has to. It's like the AI are not programmed to have a fifth gear to shift into to screw around with their straightaway speed. Like, they, they don't get that. You never see the movement in their car of them, that heavy... The front goes up and the back goes back down again. Like, it just doesn't happen. Oh my god, I am struggling just to get into 22nd we're faster than all these guys in front of us. It's just, it's so hard to pass one car. I don't know if I'm going to enjoy, like, they'll all be stacked up and grouped together again. Kevin Harvick in the gear wrench car. You know, I got to pass two cars at the same time. I'm trying to get as much as I can before this is all over. And I think I want to be on the inside. As much everyone will be on the inside at a restart at New Hampshire. I don't think you get anything from the outside because they don't have PJ1 or whatever in this game. I feel like they could have done that at any freaking point, but they wouldn't have known how to program it. Do they even know how to program PJ1 in iRacing? I mean, maybe because they're smarter and more handy with their own technology. But as far as Monster Games goes, their NASCAR heat projects, yeah, I don't blame them for not being able to take an arcade game and just add a random patch of grip in the corners at some tracks like Bristol and New Hampshire. Ugh, we got out of that shithole. And I've still got people closing in on me down the straightaways. I'm not going to put in what I first said the first time. But yeah, they closed in on me down the straightaways because I shift. Yeah, you know, I was I had a big old run on Stenhouse and then it just stopped because I had to shift. He didn't shift. He didn't shift into fifth gear. They're still programmed to just basically run fourth gear. You never see him shift in the first place. Stay high, step against the wall.
Ugh. I mean, this is textbook passing and everything, but this is Ryan Blaney in the middle of the damn field. I am going to have to find my way into second place in the second stage. I, like, I can't be like too far away from Christopher Bell starting the final stage for a good reason. Like, I am like half a tenth faster than Christopher Bell at my best. Like, you see me gain two in the corners, and then, yeah, I was able to gain two. I mean, me just passing Ryan Blaney, I was still 12.1 the whole freaking lap. I kept my eye on that after a while. Okay, so yeah, we got to 14th. And um, I know I'm faster than everyone else except for Chris Bell. Like, we are just neck and neck with him, and it's a matter of not having cars in the freaking way. But oh yeah, all this traffic issue, <laughs> it shows why Truex couldn't win the fucking race. It's like, just put him in the lead, and he's got it. Damn, you put that guy on fire when it's already his best track in the whole freaking game. Oh, freaking drove way to a five second lead over the guy in second but yeah we're just gonna i guess fix that second of damage get the tires and the fuel yeah we lost four spots we we're already on the outside anyways yeah this is just two rows but i mean i don't want to be trying to fix that damage later on when having more damage even slower down the straights we're slow enough as it is with the stupid shifting I am trying to get clear of the 21. Oh, I don't know how I didn't run over Austin Dillon and then also cleared Harrison Burton going to the corner. Like, that was a freaking miracle. Like, I was going to either dive bombed or run over Austin Dillon and get run in damage all over again. I think we're fine, though. Just like that, we're right back in 14. If I didn't have that damage repair when we could be like 9th right now, but. Hey, Daryl Waltrip from the DLC. Hi, Daryl Waltrip. This guy has come back to race in the NASCAR Cup Series after um 21 years. I don't freaking know. Cause he retired, and then right after that, he was in the broadcast booth. That's so why that must have been like 2000. He might have run some like races, like one-off races in the mid 2000s. Yeah, I get my drivers confused. There's a lot of drivers they retired, but then they come back in to run like one freaking race. Ugh. Yeah, we we're fast. Christopher Bell is not driving away to a big lead just yet. Daryl Waltrip is racing me. <laughs> Mark Drake Sr. is getting to race Daryl Waltrip. And there's Bill Elliott. Which, I mean, that's not too crazy. Bill Elliott still be racing SRX. And then he ran a race at Road America. I think that was... Two years ago? I don't want to say it was a year ago. It has to be two years ago, like 2021. Because I'm pretty sure it was after the, the start of COVID, not before that. Yeah, we're up to eighth. Chris Bell still in his clean air. He's just two seconds behind. I'm dealing with all this damn traffic, so he keeps pulling away. I'm going to catch these guys and catch him, and then we're going to start losing him because I have to pass these guys. They're faster than everyone except for Christopher Bell. It's job, There's no telling how this race plays out. I need to stay right up there with really good track position towards the end. This stage needs to be dedicated to getting past these people. Oh, okay, All Kyle Larson blowing up. Everyone is, oh my God, what? No, 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 Fucking titty ball ass and bullshit. Oh, Kyle Larson's back on the track. Yeah. You know, it's not his fault that I drove into the wall. That was my fault that I was looking behind me to see what the heck those AI were doing. They're all driving off the track to avoid them. But next thing I know, I can't get off the wall. Because this godforsaken fucked up physics engine, motorsport games decide to make it so that you can't just get off the wall. Like, I'm over here turning left so much, and it means nothing. Why it has to mean nothing, I don't know. I mean, I, I got no damage. I mean, you should have noticed that by now. I've been looking at it. Yeah, but I I got some emotional damage. There's that. Heads up on him. He's this time. Oh, we got green flag pit stops this stage? Or is this guy just a flat tire? He's the only one pitting right now. I'm trying to pass Denny Hamlin, and I've been trying to pass Denny Hamlin. And passing cars sucks, and that's what this stage was all about. Yeah, it is quite a bit longer. It's 25 laps. I didn't pay any mind to it whenever it first started. Stop racing me. You, you asshole teammate, fuck you. 
you're messing up my corners. You're, you're making me lose time to our other teammate. Oh, that was a big old damn bunch of hullabaloo. Holding me up is not going to make your race any better whenever I clearly can go on to pass another four cars after my other teammate, Kyle Busch, over here. Kyle Busch. I don't know how good Kyle Busch ran at the New Hampshire race. I don't remember. It must not have been very good if I can't remember it. I do not like that you were doing that car. See, we were 4.4 seconds back from Christopher Bell. Now we are 2.9. And that was after the struggles of Denny Hamlin and poor Almendinger lost a tire, I guess. There's a car on pit road right now, and I'm guessing that's Almendinger out of the race? I don't know. So I, I thought someone else was already out of the race, not being Kyle Larson. I can't tell who the dot is. I have no way of knowing. To wait until afterwards, see if we can figure out, see like who's several laps down because they're out the race. Kyle Larson will be like 39th for the remainder of the event. This is a really long, drawn out process to compete with these guys. They have the, the AI speed set to a T. They're just inching towards Christopher Bell as far as the interval goes. But like I said, it's a lost cause for this stage. I need to get past all these guys. Oh, I've got the time. I haven't been looking at my fuel or anything. It says eight laps. And we've got more than that. We have like 12 laps to go with the line, right? I think. So, I don't know if my best bet is to get just enough fuel to make it to the end of the stage. And like no tires or two tires. Or I mean, you, you can never just get left tires and then right tires. It's not an option. Chastain's got... Uh, his WWEX car for New Hampshire. So that's nice. One of his many cool paint schemes. I think this is his new primary for the 2023 season. But I think the proper decision to make would be just get four tires, get a full tank of fuel, and then under the caution after stage two, just get what I need to fill back up again. I just want to be up front. I do not want to lose that track position. Otherwise, my chance of catching Christopher Bell is slim to none. Evidently, right now, you put three cars in front of me, and then I can't do anything. I'm getting thrown off by Ross Jastain. I need a perfect runoff to get underneath him. Otherwise, he cock blocks my entire next corner. I, mean, see, I don't have the runoff I need. So i got to send it in on him. Damn. Shifting gears. Kirk Busch running third place. Never in his Monster Energy car. Always in the, the Jordan car. You know, Jordan paid for one race. He's getting every race in this game, though. This is Monster Energy, uh, they didn't account for the, the video game sponsorship. I, I, I don't see what the issue was, because it was in Ignition. It was in the previous Heat games. Heck, they even got the damn... Monster Energy car for Kurt Busch on the previous NASCAR game on the Switch. NASCAR Heat Ultimate Edition Plus. Ugh, how that work just to pass one guy? Like, I am pushing it so freaking hard. I'm going to have to focus really, really heavily on Christopher Bell in the final stage to make this shit happen. Do, 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 do. It's a... Christopher Byron? Wow. Christopher Byron. I mean, he can be a Christopher if he wants to be. Christopher William. Christopher Robin. You know, we're there and we're faster. Christopher Bell does have to worry about lap traffic, so there's that. And well, I don't know how I'm going to fare against lap traffic here at New Hampshire. I was great at it when we did that season with Ryan Blaney on the other Switch NASCAR game. I'm hitting him because I can't turn the car any more than that. Look at this freaking bullshit I got put up with. The car in front of me. Him car in front of me? Or other guy car in front of me? Okay, well, he's pitting, so I'm pitting. I do not know the pit road speed limit, but yeah, sure. I just need to get that spot back after a pit stop. I should be able to. Yeah, no damage to fix. That's good. Get the four tires. Um, get all the fuel. Uh, 
I mean, I really want to make this happen. And I don't know why it's such a big deal. Because if I don't, Christopher Bell wins. Like in real life. You know, there it goes. William Byron, and yeah, Almendinger, he's been sitting on pit road this whole time. So that, yeah, he's the guy. There's no one coming up behind me. Damn, William Byron gained a whole two seconds on me. And then he's running the bottom down the straightaway. I don't know what that's about. Okay, well, let's, let's gain all this back. Hopefully I can get back to him and get into second before... The stage is over. Actually, I don't know if it's that big of a deal because I'll be on the inside at the restart for the start of the final stage. So, I mean, that'd be nice. It says he's third. I thought he was second. Oh, no. Oh, Cody Ware is the leader right now. Co Cody Ware. What the fuck? Great job, driver. That's a fast lap right there. That was my fastest lap yet, I, I guess. I didn't feel like it was anything too crazy, but I do have fresh tires, so that might contribute. And yeah, now William Byron is second. Uh, Cody Ware, he went down pit road. I don't know how he made it so far. I don't know what the point of that was. Ah, crap. Yeah, these lap cars, one at the top, one at the bottom. Keep it off the wall. And we got to go. Three laps. Oh, okay. We definitely got William Byron. Then. Christopher Bell is actually still not too far away. I can't tell which car he is. Every car is black and white. Like, I mean, I mean, sure, it's a, it's a low-resolution video game, but fine. We'll come to the restart on the inside. That saves me some fuel and tires, I guess. Kyle Larson is actually on the lead lap, huh? And it's just him and Ross Chastain pitting. And then there's Greg Biffle, but I don't know. Any one of these three guys could wind up have been the caution. Yeah, we're not going to pit because no one else is. We're all on the same strategy. And it's all down to, to this restart. Make the moves. If he can drive away a little bit, well, I can focus and I can work on him. He's a Truex. He started on the pole. And they threw it away with, like, poor strategy. We put him in the middle. We put Chris Bell in the middle, and then he just checked up. And now we're helping Kurt Busch get underneath him. Oh, now Chris Bell's going to have the reverse, the complete swap. He's going to be in Truex position and then automatically wind up finishing like 6 or something. I mean, that's not going to happen. He's going to be so damn freaking fast, he'll wind up still finishing second somehow. But there we go. We got the lead. And I have a lot of driving to do. So yeah, that's how the run's gone. You know, for a second I thought that Chris Verlo was actually just gonna not get back into second. Well, then he got the third. He was sitting in fifth forever. Now they want me to go get fuel. Um, I'm gonna wait one more lap because I'm worried that I could like be like, one lap short or something, and I don't want to chance it. This is damn shifting, wasting my fuel. But I mean, gotta do it. Got a cup hit for gas here. Yeah, I'm I'm gonna do that. I mean, oh my god, these are the guys I had to pass the start of the race. I start running at full speed, and right, this is how much faster I am. You're betting this time, dude. Is Hank Hill pitting this time? I don't fucking know. But don't okay, run out of gas on the road entry like he did in the other freaking game. Cause that sucked. I almost sped in because I didn't know what the freaking the road speed is. They put the thing right here saying what it is, and then all the way at the bottom right over there, they can't just put like side by side, so I know what I'm doing. But yeah, just get four tires, get uh, two cans, don't fix no damage. See, I don't know what to do because they're not telling me how many laps we got left in the race, how much the full tank is, I don't have any information that I need. But you said 20 to go a while ago, and then I ran like five six more laps so maybe i need a full tank maybe i mean i gotta oh my god at almost two second five second lead when i came in to take my my pit stop so i guess i made the right decision he caught right the heck back up to me 
by taking less fuel, maybe only two tires or something. But now I got better tires than everyone in the entire field, if that's what's going on here. And we beat Christopher Bell out, I think that's all we need to worry about. Okay, no, no, wait a second. William Byron is ahead of me. Oh, okay, so I think he pit a lap before me and Christopher Bell did, and he was ahead of Christopher Bell. I'm so worried I'm going to get all these damn name wrongs. They start stuttering, and you know it. So we're tracking him down. Definitely on fresher tires. And, oh, my God, this car's doing some weird wobbly thing in the middle of the corner. Like, it's a bumpy track over there. And Ross Chastain has a 20-second lead over us. I mean, he's not the leader, but he's got a lead over us. I, whatever. Now, Kyle Larson is on pit road. So we're going to get that spot back. And, oh, man, he's going to have to finish poorly because of staying out like that. And he, he led some laps. He got some TV time for HendrickCars.com. Around this dude. I'm having a hard time keeping up with William Byron. This guy that I have fresher tires than and just drove five seconds away from before he took my pit stop. What the shit? Well, now he's got three lap cars to get around, and I don't think that's going to happen. I, I don't think so, but it could. I need to focus. I'm not, I'm not catching him. Damn it, Austin Cindric, Bubba Wallace, fucking buffoons. Why y'all running, bo both of you, running this bad? Cindric should be running like know, at least 20th. Bubba should be running at least 15th. I mean, knowing like what speed and what they are capable of during this year. Byron's faster than Bell, and I don't know why. He's not on fire. He's not even good at this track in real life. He, I, I don't think he's like, done any amazing things in New Hampshire since he come to the Cup Series. Where are they getting this freaking dry ratings from? But are we coming to the white flag this time? The first it was five laps, and then it was four, and maybe I done missed three. I have no idea. Okay, so now it's two to go. You know what? I'm not going to tell you anything out. I'm going to continue driving. You know, there was this long stint of me just driving this car and pulling away to that five-second lead that I had before taking the pit stop at the start of this run. And I was like, you know what, I'm just going to zoom in on the, the leaderboard and show them the interval, because that's interesting. I can fast-forward that and they can see what I do. Timeline. But I feel like you get your taste of me driving this car and focused and, and closing a gap on somebody and 
and whatever while ago to get to William Byron and pass him. So yeah, you get your, your taste of that. No onboard stuff because this race is so intense and actually challenging. You know, if I wasn't on pace, if I never got to the trap that I need, there's so many things that have gotten in the way of me winning this thing. All these damn lap cars. Kevin Harvick is 27. He was the guy that was holding up Truex in real life. And said he's the fall lap down in his gear wrench car. You mean to tell me I won this race on speed, pulled away to a five second lead, and I only get a speed rating of 102? What is 105? I'm 105 difficulty, but what? I don't understand this shit. Yeah, let's burn it down here at New England. They're gonna give Martrex Jr. his big old lobster. It is it's a lobster, right? Big old thing. Denny Hamill scared of it. But um did, did Truex already win at New Hampshire at one point? I don't remember. But anyhow, here we are in the New Hampshire victory lane. And you know, you got your your Embedder 301 trophy. Where's the lobster? They're supposed to give us a lobster. I ain't seen no damn lobster. Fastest lap, what was me with a 29-2. I never came close to that lap time again. I got a bunch of 29-3s and whatever. Yeah, Christopher Bell, he started up front, so he still managed to lead the most laps. Yeah, started 39th, finished first. And the tough break has to go to Almendinger, right? No, it was Eric Jones. He started fifth, and then he just finished 29th. He just didn't have good pace at the end of the race. And here's the results, all that stuff. Kyle Larson really did recover very well. I mean, the guy blew a tire... And I guess he got a, a wave around or something. And then he just managed to climb back and still finish there. Because he was leading at one point during pit stops. And I thought that was because he was staying out on Warren Tires or whatever. Do, 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 do. So yeah, only 27 cars finished on the lead lap. Nothing too crazy for New Hampshire standards. Definitely some some great racing for the win. Just like there usually is in New Hampshire. But everyone's like, oh, New Hampshire's so boring. I hate this track. I enjoy racing this track. This is, this is a tough track. It feels good, bruh. That was a uh, interesting little presentation of sorts. You know, that was my second race there because I did a race there where I was pretending to be Chase Elliott in my career mode, which that's all pointless now. And then, well, I didn't win, but I made sure I got it this time. I think next week the plan is to go racing at Daytona because of Speed Week and Bub Wallace, he has finished second in that race twice. And then, well, he was the closest to winning it in 2022. And that's what this game is based off of. But then there's also the possibility of like whatever, you know, dual races happen throughout the week before I get to the NASCAR Rivals video, something like that. I have no idea because it's usually Friday. I don't remember when the dual races are. Are they on Friday? Yeah, that, that wouldn't be good. I guess we'll just freaking uh, do a Bubba Wallace episode. I, I fucking hate this guy now because, he, like, he, he's done so much douchey shit, never improved his behavior, but um, I was there to see it happen. I would have been happy to see it at the time. So, yeah, let's, let's go back to whenever I didn't entirely hate Bubba Wallace in the next episode of this uh, NASCAR Rivals uh, Race Now series. See you next time. That's that, and episode over.